Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I know, I know, trying to cram eight wines into one of these videos again. Trying to cram eight wines, I think I deserve, it's Christmas coming up soon, maybe I'll treat myself to a larger table rather than this, these uh, two little Ikea jobbies. Uh, anyway, uh, I have got eight uh, spicy southern reds today. Uh, two of them are from Spain, I think it, not quite the first and the last, but uh, uh, but the rest of them are a uh, southern France. There's, yeah, there's, there's a Rhone one, but uh, mostly Languedoc, uh, I think, for the rest of them. Let's just dig in. First one is Les Grands Chemins, uh, Carignan Vievine from the Pays d'Hero. Um, first, I think the first five are all, well, most of them are 2011 vintage. Anyway, uh, if I forget to say, it's probably 2011. Let's give this one a whirl. There's this like boiled vanilla smell. Now I'm not quite sure where that comes from. Um, I think of Carignan, and I think of Carignan as being some, sometimes quite a bit savage. And uh, uh, if, it, if you over ripen it, it goes raisin. If you if you get it uh, on the right side, it gets this herbiness and these violets. Here, there's yeah, this muddy vanilla. I'm not sure uh, where that's from. But um, for me, it misses out on the Carignan spikiness. Uh, it's trying to be just like a little bit too smooth, and in, in an effort to be smooth, has um, has been rendered um, with a absence of character. Hey, uh, next one. Um, GSM, Grenache Syrah Mauverdre. Looks like it's going to be a French wine, but no. Uh, look on the back and it says, uh, grapes grown in Valencia. Uh, and it's been made by award-winning winemaker Pablo. Oh, there's a strange smell there. You know when you're having your teeth drilled at the dentist and there's that smell of burnt tooth? Uh, I get that here, which isn't something I necessarily want to smell in a wine, but beyond that, there, there is uh, there are some berries. There is it, it, It's funny, it doesn't feel like a, a French wine at all. It feels like it's got this Spanish heat about it. And yes, the Languedoc is hot, but it's a different sort of heat you get in southern Spain. Um, rounded, juicy, simple, but um, uh, let's see whether I get burnt teeth when I put it on my unburnt teeth. Well, Pablo seems to have done a reasonable job there. Juicy, plump, um, maybe in an effort to try and keep it uh, just a little bit too fresh, he's um, uh, maybe added a little bit too much acidity, I'm not sure. Uh, but because uh, 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 it starts off well and then the fin finish goes that little bit too hard and you're left with something that is sweet but hard. But uh, sounds like a um, recalcitrant humbug, but um, slightly better than that. Try wine number three. Uh, which is, oh, it's got a picture of a pig on, it's bound to be good. Uh, actually, it's not a pig, it's Le Sanglier Sauvage, wild boar. Uh, homage à la bête, 2011, from the Cote de Languedoc. I thought they, the Cote de Languedoc was disappearing and you had to uh, uh, just put Languedoc on, on wines now. And uh, anyway, um, the French appellation laws, don't you just love them? Uh, grapes here, doesn't really give all that much away, but I imagine we're in with the usual suspects. Grenache, Sierra Morverdre, Carignan, maybe some Sanso, and various proportions thereof. Well, there's this uh, black currant and violet edge here, which made me wonder whether uh, the, the, the Carignan -y, y character I was missing on the first one makes me wonder whether there's a little bit of Carignan here. Uh, that's when you find out, of course, that that uh, character is actually reduced Syrah. But there is, yeah, there's this spicy, um, earthy black currant uh, with a freshness about it. It feels like it's going to have a juiciness and uh, a glugability, a sausage friendliness ability, if that's the word it is now. Um, but um, it smells like it's, it's going to be the best so far. Yes, there's a warmth and a spiciness about that. That, that. then there's also this cool herbiness, uh, and the two sit together very nicely. Um, so it, it, it doesn't. It's not a, a, a profound wine by any means, but there's, it, there's this juicy sappiness. Uh, so there's a ripeness about the fruit. So there's the plums, there's the brambles, and then there's this fresh herbiness, notes of pepper, and. Um, I, I really do like that. The sort of wine that if, uh, yes, we're in the middle of a, um, a rather beautiful chilly day end of November here, but if it was six months from now and it was a beautiful chilly, probably it will be a beautiful chilly day at the end of May, uh, but a beautiful summer, a warm summer's day, I'd almost be tempted to stick that in the fridge for 20 minutes or so just to uh, give it a little bit of, um, perk up the freshness. Not that it lacks freshness anyway, but um, tasty wine. Um, number four, uh, Reserve Combe um, from Saint Chignon, and um, let's give this one a whirl. Um, I quite, I'm coming across quite a few wines at the moment where you're really struggling to find out who's actually made the wine. I mean that GSM, it just says GSM on there, but um, Reserve Combe, oh les producteurs réunis, so a co-op in other words. 
not all that much leaping out of the glass here. Uh, I think the, the previous one, uh, because of that perky freshness, uh, maybe has uh, said to this one, look, go on, follow that. Um, it smells okay. Uh, the, there is some of that earthy uh, garrigi spice and there is some rounded, quite plush fruit, but um, it just feels a little bit stolid after the previous one, or at least that's how it smells. Then when you come to taste it, uh, <laughs> he said, proving himself entirely wrong, actually I quite like that, um, there's this um, herby, sappy, peppery spiciness um, that, um, that suddenly springs into life. And um, I don't know whether there's a lot of syrup in there, but I'm getting this uh, uh, blackcurrant, blackberry, orange peel character, which make, make, what, what make, 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 makes me think of the syrup. Um, and yes, a rich earthy freshness. It could just be that uh, the previous one is uh, is one that's sort of like straining at the leash now, uh, whereas this one is uh, a little bit more reticent and uh, reluctant to uh, show its true colours. But uh, I've got a feeling that given a bit of time, um, it will show its true colours. It just feels like, uh, yeah, a wine in waiting. Um, so, bye. I mean, what time is it now? Quarter past three. Um, I think uh, if I were to uh, uh, sit and leave the bottle sitting there and try it at seven o'clock, um, might be a different picture. Not entirely, but um, I think it might have come out of its shell. So I think I'll do that, and uh, I will report back, but I'll have another slick. slug. Slick, swig, slug, oh dear. I'm actually starting to like it more than the one before. Oh, you shouldn't change your mind, should you? I like them both. Horses for courses. Let's see whether this is a horse or whether it is a course. Um, Le Jamel, Reserve Mauverde Van der Pey Doc. I thought you couldn't put Van der Pey Doc now. I thought you had to be IGB Doc, but uh, anyway, this, this one still proudly carries the uh, Van der Pey label. Uh, 2011, apparently winner of a regional trophy at the Decanter Wine Awards. So, expecting a lot from this. Dark, earthy, plummy. Um, it feels like there's a core of something which is um, uh, saying, not today, come back tomorrow, and I will reveal a few a few more of my true colours there. Then um, it feels like it's sometimes more verde can be a bit stinky. Um, don't find don't find any of that stink here, but I do find something that uh, feels a little bit stubborn, and uh, so um, maybe I'll give it a bit more of a swirl before I taste it. There's a floral character there, but there's also this. Um, um, I was talking about that false vanilla uh, character on the uh, on on wine number one. I get that same thing here. Uh, as if uh, the way in which it's been made, um, I, I don't know, it's something to do with vinification, um, but uh, yeah, it's like, as if someone's put uh, slightly uh, cold Nescafe in there. Um, vanilla, I, I really, I, I'm not quite sure how that got a trophy. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's okay, and there's this big fruit there, and. I, it, it, maybe it will come out of its shell, but um, on this showing, it's a bit, uh, bit disappointing. Yeah, it feels like someone's been making wine uh, to try and, uh, uh, try and try, yeah, try and make something a little bit softer and friendlier, and in the process has uh, got rid of um, the character in the wine. Oh well. Um, wine number six. Are we on Mitico by Borsal. Uh, Old Vines Garnacha from Campo de Boja, is it? Um, I can't see if it does it say Campo de Boja. Yeah, it does say Campo de Boja on here. 2011, um, and I usually like these people's wines, so let's see whether this um, lives up to my expectations. Yeah, this is ripe and spicy in all the right places. Um, it, it's got this uh, just ever so slight jamminess about it. It feels like the fruit's got very ripe and started to shrivel a little bit, but not too much. Um, and uh, picked up lots of character. You, you can almost like take, taste the dustiness, the smell of dustiness of the soil and uh, the herbiness of the, uh, uh, of, of the surrounds. Uh, it, it feels like a bit of a, a wild, slightly hairy chested wine. And um, uh, let's just see whether it is. Juicy friendly glugger. Um, I'm not sure, I mean, they're, 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 they do several bottlings of this and some of them end up under five quid. And, uh, or well, they used to certainly. I don't know whether they still do, but um, uh, pretty reliable. Uh, they do some um, higher-end cuvées, and you know what? I never think they're quite as good as some other people think they are. I actually like the cheaper ones better, where it's like as if they're not trying too hard to impress you. Uh, but it's just this lovely, open, friendly, uh, spicy. Sp yeah, it, it, it's one of those things that will put his arm around you and then take you to a seedy dive. And uh, you'll have a good evening, but you, you probably shouldn't tell people about it the following morning. I, um, I like that.
Yeah, some of their wines finish a bit more uh, rounded and uh, open than than, uh, than this one. Got a suspicion that this one, uh, I can almost feel that some tannins in there, um, and I don't know whether it's it's been in oak or, or, or something like that. But um, uh, if it has, they've, they've handled it pretty well, and it could be. Yeah, it feels it feels almost like that the, there is, is is more of a wine waiting to pounce. 2011 vintage, I think. Yeah. Um, so it could be that uh, six months time, it'll come out of its shell even more. But it's looking. Pretty smart today. Um, the last 2011 is um, a Lee Cliff. Cliff. I never can I'm quite know no in France, in France whether you say Lee Cle. This has certainly got an F in Lee Cle Croix Cross Keys uh, Chateau Neuf du Pape 2011. And this is the Co-op's own bottling done for them by Augier. Well, I smell it, and um, I. I, I don't get so much, too much uh, Chateau Neuf du Papity about it. Um, if anything, it smells. The thing it reminds me of. There's, um, I get this almost sandy baked character that reminds me of uh, South Africa as much as anything. I don't know whether. Um, I mean, South Africa's got quite a bit of sun, so I don't know whether there's a, a characteristic that uh, has been transferred uh, here. But uh, I, I don't know if, I, if it says Chateau Neuf du Pape on the label. I'm expecting a little bit more than what seems to be here. Let's taste it. There is a bit more substance there when you come to taste it. Rounded, plummy, but with this juiciness and the freshness about it. Um, herbs, spices, um, and a floral character. Um, something quite exotic as well. Um, not quite sure what, 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 it, what it could be. It feels, um, yeah, it, it feels like one of those um, uh, lychee almost. I'd be strange to, to find something like that in, uh, uh, in a red wine, but there is, there is something, uh, it's one of those exotic... Uh, exotic fruits in here but as I suspected when I smelt it it's um, if I'm buying a bottle of Chateau Neuf du Pape I want a little bit more uh, experience than that that wine is giving me uh, it is um, it's it's very nice uh, and if it said Cote de Rhone Village on the label I'd be probably jumping up and down and saying this is really good but um, I don't know I expect a bit more from Chateau Neuf du Pape it's good but um, it doesn't do Chateau Neuf du Pape many, many favours let's try the final wine uh, let's see whether this does Priorat any favours. So this is Torres Salmos 2009 Priorat. So back in Spain, uh, one of the the appellations of Spain. Let's see whether it delivers one of the experiences of this particular octet. Well, certainly a lot more character uh, than uh, most of the wines that have gone before. Um, but I get a bit of volatility. Uh, I get a little bit of a slightly dank, what I call Rioja-like wood about it, real old-style Rioja wood, um, that is, um, uh, yeah, yeah it's, it's like playing with the fruit and saying, right, OK, uh, having a bit of a tussle. And sometimes yeah, those wines that are having, having this tussle, uh, they end up making friends and it ends up being uh, uh, a very, very successful wine. And sometimes they sit there apart and end up sulky and often the wood says, well, I told you so. Uh, but here, um, I better taste it, haven't I? It, I'm, it smells intriguing. And um, I, it smells like one of those wines that I want to almost like watch over the course of several hours and uh, see how it develops and how it comes out of its shell. Powerful, heady, rich, and yeah, the fruit is more than able to cope with uh, any um, any characteristics that are coming from the uh, uh, from the oak aging. And it's it's uh, it's got this uh, lovely thing. That, the, the, it's got the uh, ripe juiciness uh, of um, of uh, I don't I don't know what the what the blend is here is here, but it feels like there's the the, the, the garnacha that's giving this heartiness and this slightly fiery character, and then there's the carignana. Uh, that, that is adding in, uh, it feels like the Carignana has, has, has gone quite ripe, so it's gone slightly raisiny, but it's adding this um, slightly spiky edge as well. Not sure whether they've added uh, other grape varieties in, in, in there as well. But um, it, it feels more, uh, I, not too modern, not too old fashioned. It feels like a wine that I'm very happy to uh, sit down and watch over the course of the evening. And uh, particularly if I were in accompanied by large pieces of meat to uh, uh, to entertain myself. But um, I, I'm always in a, two minds about wines like this. Should I keep them? I've tried keeping some of them and um, some of them just go too raisiny and uh, the tannin and the structure uh, just never recede and the fruit sort of struggles to get out. But others, uh, the terroir really does come through in the end. Here, I'm getting the fruit and I'm getting the uh, this earthiness of the terroir coming through. Um, and uh, so I would, uh, I mean, if I had two bottles, I'd probably uh, drink one in the next six months and drink one 
maybe two or three years from now and it may be that two or three years from now I'm disappointed that I haven't got a third bottle to keep for another few years but um, uh, probably a favourite of the tasting although these numbers three and four I will be keeping an eye on those because uh, they intrigue me and that's what I want from wine I want intrigue see you soon